That's right, we're printing out Reddit posts now. The production value is off the charts. And let me tell you, you're going to want to stick around to the end for this one. Let's take a look at this question and see if you can guess what nonsense we're going to see with the answer and how it was graded. The question says, Carol read 28 pages of a book on Monday and 103 pages on Tuesday. Is 75 pages a reasonable answer for how many more pages Carol read on Tuesday than on Monday? Okay, is 75 pages a reasonable answer? Well, you might think the first thing to do would be to just do 103 minus 75. Is 75 pages a reasonable answer for how many more pages Carol read on Tuesday than Monday? Well, 75 is the answer for how many more pages she read on Tuesday than Monday. 75 is exactly correct. So is it a reasonable answer? We would certainly have to say yes. And certainly an answer which says yes would have to earn full credit. I mean, it's the correct answer. Well, let's take a look at our protagonist's solution. Yes, 75 is a reasonable answer because 103 minus 28 equals 75. That makes sense. But then you see they lost a point. The teacher says, no, 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 that's not, that's not fully correct. You're supposed to estimate 100 minus 30 is 70. So what is 75 pages not a reasonable answer because they were supposed to estimate and get a, a less correct number? Is that, is that the point? I mean, this seems a little hard to believe. Obviously, teachers grade things differently, and sometimes a teacher will grade something in a way that even they would disagree with if you brought it up to them and gave them an extra minute to think about it. But this seems crazy. I mean, we're really going to take away a point because their answer is exactly correct? Now, if we give some benefit of the doubt, there's a couple things we could think here. For one, who knows how many points the question is worth. Perhaps it's worth 10 points, and this minus 1 is very little. It's probably more likely that the question is worth somewhere between 1 to 3 points, and they've lost half or a third credit. If I were grading this question, I would grade it out of 2 points. I would be looking for sound reasoning and consistency. So, for example, if they said no... 75 is not a reasonable answer because 103 minus 28 equals 75, I would give 1 out of 2. Because it's true that 103 minus 28 is 75, that is a relevant calculation, but you should then say, yes, this is a reasonable answer because of that. So I would be looking for soundness and congruity between the answer and the explanation. If a student said, yes, 75 is a reasonable answer because it's divisible by 5, I would give 1 out of 2 because yes is correct, but the reasoning is certainly not correct. It has nothing to do with the problem. Another way we could give the teacher the benefit of the doubt is by assuming that this is just one subproblem from a bigger section that says, you know, all of the following problems should be solved with estimation. You should be using estimates. There could be some context here about what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to answer answer the question that we are missing. In that case, I would say it's great that they're learning estimation. That's a really important skill to have, but the arithmetic here is just too simple to require it. And so you can't possibly take points away from a student for saying, I mean, this is so trivial. I'm just going to do the math. I'm not going to estimate. And if you're not convinced of the value of estimation as a skill, let me try to convince you real quick. Suppose we're doing some five digit addition, 59,018 plus 32,117. Maybe I don't want to do this in my head because I might make a little mistake and I don't want to take the time to do it with pencil and paper. We can estimate it very accurately, though, if we just round the numbers to the nearest hundred. If we round to the nearest hundred, each number will be changed at most by 50, and so at most, our final answer will be off by 100. If we round to the nearest hundred, this becomes 59,000 plus 30. 2.1 thousand or 32,100 and this is pretty darn easy 59 plus 32 is 91 and then there's 100 so it's 91.1 thousand or 91,100 
just how good of an estimate is this? Well, it's only off from the true answer by 35. If we're using this technique of estimation with five digit addition problems, our error is always going to be less than 1%. Because like I said, our error is at most 100. And for a five digit addition problem, the correct answer is going to be bigger than 10,000. So the error less than 1%, you can get some great estimations really easily. And estimation is powerful because it scales up pretty well. Say we were doing eight digit addition problems. We can use the same sort of technique and get very accurate estimations. So here we're trying to add 88 million and change to 31 million and change. I definitely don't want to do this in my head and I really don't feel like doing it on pencil and paper either. But again, if we round in this case, let's say to the nearest 100,000, then again, we're going to get proportionally a very accurate answer. If we round to the nearest 100,000, then this becomes 88.7 million plus 31.6 million. I'm just using this notation with decimals to cut down on the number of zeros we have to write. And then this is pretty darn easy to do. 88 plus 30 is 118 plus one is 119, and then add these decimals up, it becomes 120.3. So 120.3 million. Or writing it traditionally, 120 million, 300,000. In this case, our easy estimate is off by less than 50,000. Again, this technique is going to get us the correct answer within 1%, so less than 1% error. With numbers of this scale, the error of you know less than 50,000 in this particular problem that's great this is accurate it's easy estimation is definitely a skill worth learning so understanding that estimation is definitely a valuable skill that students should be learning is the teacher in the right for taking off a point for the students lack of estimating here well it doesn't matter because that's not what she did yes this is another lesson in completely ridiculous trivial, petty, internet lying to farm online karma and upvotes from strangers. Thankfully, my production values are off the charts, printed out Reddit posts, and a 4K camera, so you might be able to see that there is a faintly written answer, which was erased, written behind the answer that we actually see written on this paper. There's an answer there that is actually what the teacher took points off for because the answer hiding in the background is the shadow of former mistakes. This is a horrible answer which was originally written. I certainly would have taken off all points for an answer as terrible as what was written here. It is somewhat hard to see so to an extent we can only hazard a guess at what it says but if you look closely I think you'll agree that it says no, because 75 is not close to 28 or 103. I didn't trace it perfectly there, but hopefully that gives you an idea of the wrong answer that's hiding in the background. So this is an interesting case. The question all by itself is a little strange because you might look at it and say, why would you ask if 75 pages is a reasonable answer when all you have to do is basic subtraction to find the exactly correct answer? But obviously, depending on the grade, this subtraction is not trivial, and it might make sense to just do a quick estimation. 100 minus 20 is 70, so 75 appears to be reasonable. But regardless, it's pretty clear the original answer was nonsensical. So what happened here? Did a parent take their kid's graded homework and then erase their response and write their own to post it online to trigger strangers and get upvotes for, you know, sympathy? I mean, maybe, but who's to say that the whole thing could be deliberate? Someone could have done all of this themselves and deliberately left a former answer in the background to uh, just spike additional speculation and engagement. I mean, the internet is just such a strange place these days. So, you know, there are many reasons some kids may hate math, but this is not one of them because this never happened. I'm making it up fast So slow down, give me the time so I can fake it Erase the tune of words and just how I say shit and let me speak my poetry to your face It's not in the mid if you ain't listening Not infinite if you ain't really in the